All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. We wanted to go over what we use for our camera gear while we are doing these videos, while we're taking pictures of the van or we're out in nature. This is some of the camera gear that we use to make these videos. We will get started with the camera that we film with pretty much all of the time is our Canon EOS R. We bought this one because it is mirrorless. It was a lot lighter weight than the DSLRs we've had before. So we went ahead and went with that body for Canon. And what we have on that, and what I'm filming on at the moment right now, would be a RF 15 to 35 lens. And maybe I'm only an arm's length away from the actual camera. And that's what's great about when you do these vlogs or when you're out camping and you're doing this up close type of videos is that you don't have to be that far away from the camera but it makes it look like I'm further away. So we use the 15 to 35 lens. It's been great. We also have a 50 mil lens that I do photography with. We love that. It's small and compact. On top of the camera we have the Video Rode Mic Go. So it's their newer version of it. Um, we've had the Micro Mini before that we've used but we do like this one. It has been a little bit hit and miss with the audio. I think we finally have got it dialed in where we don't have as many issues with it. So that's going to be our main camera setup, which is great most of the time with this camera while we're out and filming, when we're at a campsite, we will also be using our Peak tripod. We didn't go with the carbon one because it was a little bit more on the expensive side, but if we do start to bring up a tripod with us, we're probably going to upgrade to the carbon one because it is a lot lighter in weight and when you're carrying this gear it is very very heavy so that is our main setup for our vlogging camera that we use with our canon eos r the next piece of equipment that we will use is our gopro so with this little guy this is the gopro hero 10 we do have the media mod on here so as you can tell it does have a microphone on it it has the power button on this top and then the modes on the side and then as you can tell it has these little flip opens so one of them is to actually plug in an external mic which we've thought about doing the other one is also where you can charge it USB-C so having those ports is great for this and then we just leave it on top of the mount because this is where we will slide it right into our um, dash on the van so that way we can get some of those road shots with this. So for some of the shots that we've been doing, you might have seen where it's cool 360 views. Um, we did invest in an Insta360, the um, X3, yep, X3. So with this guy, this is a you know 360 camera and this has been awesome to use with large skiing with the hiking um had to buy the in, you know the invisible stick that it has this isn't the full extended one where you know some people where you can like throw it up in the air but we got the normal one so we're able to like stick this outside of the van like you saw get some shots like that um one of them that we did was in you know sedona or some places where you're not allowed to have drones. These are great because it gives you that 360 and you can kind of throw it up in the air. This has been really fun to use and a great addition to what we're doing right now. Next, we have our DJI Mini 3 Pro. We went ahead and upgraded to the, we had the Mini 3, but we went ahead and upgraded to the Pro because we like the fact that it had active track. It can track the van it's super easy to use we also upgraded to the rc controller where you don't have to have your phone connected to it which this has been a game changer so don't have to whip out my phone she doesn't have to whip out hers connect it in so we went ahead and upgraded to this little guy and the fact that it can fold down so easy and just fit into an almost any bag. You don't need a license for it. And it still gets great shots. No, it's not as cinematic as, you know, DJI's other drones that they might have. But I mean, the fact that this can just 
fit in the palm of my hand is just absolutely amazing. It's just so tiny for what it is. And I mean, honestly, the controller's bigger than, than the actual drone itself. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to all of this, but this has been really great for us to fit in our bag, to have this available for when we can fly our drone. It's gotten some amazing shots. So this is definitely a piece of gear that we are glad that we upgraded to and really have enjoyed. One last thing that we'll use on our main setup camera is actually a variable ND filter. Um, I've always been a big user of filters and I really thought it would be nice just to do a variable one so that way I could just take it and, you know, fix the stops on that instead of having to actually switch out the ND filters every time. So we ended up going with Polar Pros and it's the Peter McKinnon one. We did the two to five S stop and like that's what's on there right now. So we have this filter on here, which is great. This is being used indoors and I think this is on a two. Yep, so this is on a two right now. If I changed it, you can kind of see the difference when you kind of drop it which is great. So having a filter like this, where you don't have to constantly switch them out, especially if you're on the road or if you're trying to get a quick shot and you know most of the time, you know, you're using between a two and a five ND filter. Well, this is what's great about the, and the variable one is that I can just switch it while it's still on the actual camera. So it's really nice. It comes with this nice metallic cover on the front. And then we always use the rubber one that it comes with when we're not using the camera and smack that on there. So that way that has always been protected. And we've actually dropped our camera once. And because this is so thick on the sides where you can kind of see it, it actually ended up catching before the actual lens caught and it helps save our whole setup when the camera decided to eat some shit. So. I will say having this on there has been great. What we carry all of this in on every trip that we go, we have the Wonder Provoke Packs and I have a 31 liter and I also have the Tech Pouch up front, which has been great for when I need to bring my Mac laptop or even the iPad. I can throw all the cords in here in the front. This is something that's sold separately, but I'm very glad I got it. So this is their black camo bag that they did. Absolutely love it. It's been a game changer. I, every trip, we end up just throwing everything in here. We throw it in the van. I know I've got all the extra little bits and nits that I need if I need another battery or if, you know, we need to switch out a wing on the drone. All of that is in this bag. So that way, when we go to do a trip, I just pull everything down from our charging wall, put it in this bag, good to go. Love these bags for a 31 liter. I am 5'5 and it fits me really well because I know with the bigger bags it is harder, but the roll top on this is also great because you're able to extend this if you have like clothes or something that you need to put in here because the lower half for this bag on the back here is going to be like this lower half will all be our camera gear and the upper half is where you can put other stuff in but this is kind of how ours is looking like so you can see that bottom half is where we put all of our camera gear in our drone in so this whole lower half we're able to keep sd cards i actually have two lenses in here because this is what came with the canon kit that we bought so this is the 24 to 105, it's not the RF. That's why we upgraded it, because it has a better F-stop on there. And so we've got this lens in there, you know, nifty 50 lens. We've got this one in here as well too. And so we've got all of our extra little GoPro mounts that we need. So this is going to fit everything that I just talked about and we have no problem packing all this in there. And then on the back end here, on the flap is where we would put our laptop or our iPad. So as I mentioned before, our charging wall that we have back here. And this thing has been a lifesaver. This was the probably the biggest 
pain in the ass to put together. When I watch videos on YouTube about it, they did not make it look this easy. This is literally like a two day job for us at least to get the way that we wanted it. So we built this charging wall and it has been phenomenal. Every trip, we just come back, we unload, we put all the batteries up there, we put everything up there so it's not just hanging in the bag. And when we're ready, everything is charged. And honestly, it's really nice to look at when you have an office like this. It gives it some type of, you know, ambiance with the lighting behind there, but also I know everything's charged. So we have this charging wall, which we worked really hard on and it's just been really nice to be able to come home, put all this away, and then know for the next trip all I have to do is unplug it, or if it's already if I already unplugged it because I know it's charged, throw it into the bag, and we are set and good to go. So if you want more details on this, um, we do have a video where we can put together how we built this if you're interested in that. But for the time being, that is what we use to charge everything for our videos that we do. All right guys, so that's everything that we use to make these videos. If you guys have questions or comments about anything, go ahead and you know put them below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. We're coming out with videos weekly and until next time guys, we will see you in the next one.